Hey guys, how's it going? Happy New Year to all of you. I hope you had a great set of holidays and are back recharged and energized to make some epic progress in your software engineering careers. And to help you with that, I have some awesome content planned for 2022. So if you've not subscribed, now is a great time to do it. And since this is my first video for 2022, I thought I would start by showing you how I plan and organize my entire life using Notion. I've been a huge fan of Notion since I first found out about it and use it pretty much for all of my organizational needs. So when they reached out asking if I wanted to show you guys how I use Notion on a daily basis as a software engineer, I was quite excited. For those of you that don't know what Notion is, it is a fantastic tool that helps you take notes, manage tasks, set goals, create complex relationships databases and formulas and so much more so that you can build a perfect space a dashboard if you will that will keep you productive and motivated towards your goals as you know I have a full-time job as a software engineer and I also run this YouTube channel all by myself to ensure that I stay on top of everything I need to get done and stay productive in spite of having a very busy schedule I have four key areas that I pay special attention to planning and organization, note-taking, collaboration, and execution. And I use Notion to manage the bulk of these. So in today's video, I'll give you a brief overview on how I use Notion to help manage these areas. All right, let's get started. First up is planning and organization. The goal of which is to be aware of your detailed schedule at least a month in advance, if not more. This basically means knowing exactly what you need to do, when it needs to be done, and how you're going to do it. I need to exercise this in multiple areas of my life, work, personal tasks, side projects, and YouTube. Let's look at how I plan and organize uh, this YouTube channel as an example. Okay, so before I dive into the four areas and how Notion can help you manage those, I thought I'd give you a brief tour of how I've set up my Notion workspace. So if you look at the left navigation here, there are three main sections. One is called the favorites, the other one is shared, and then the third one is private. Um, favorites is my dashboard. That's what I use uh, to kind of get an overview of what I need to do every week or every every day, that's where I start. Uh, we'll look more into that in a bit. Shared is things that I've shared with my team. In this case, it's either my wife or some other people that I work on some startup ideas or some side projects. So as you can see, tasks and startup sections are shared. And then the privates are just my own uh, management areas where I work, YouTube, some learning, finances, fitness projects, and habit tracker and some archive things that I don't use anymore. So obviously, like I said before, everything starts off with the dashboard. So if you can see here, I have some quick references and then quick notes. Um, and then I have a to-do timeline, which we'll get to later in this video, but below that I have a content tracking timeline. And I really like this timeline view because it tells me exactly where I am and then what I need to work on. So it shows that I need to work on this video, which is how I organize my life using Notion. Um, and I need to finish it at a certain time. It'll tell me some other metadata regarding it. And then obviously, uh, if I keep scrolling, there are other videos that I don't wanna disclose to you right now. So I'll probably blur it out, but it gives me a brief overview about what's going on in my week or my month essentially. But this is just not limited to that. If you if I want to change to a table view and see all the videos I'm about to work on, I can do that. Or I can switch it to a different view, that's a calendar view, and see what all my um, videos are. Not just that, but I can actually click this item and get much more details about this video. I've got the script over there, I've got some talking points, I've got some things that I want to show in this video, I can put notes, I can add my research into it. So it's basically sort of a notebook just for this video, you know, and you can create hundreds of those for different areas, link them to different tasks. For example, if you look at here, it says um, tasks, and then I've created tasks, which we'll talk about in a bit. For, for this video, I have to script the video, record the video, edit the video, and review and publish the video, all of which could have their own things that I need to do. So like when I'm scripting a video, I may need to collect all the resources and kind of put it in there. And then when I'm recording, I may need to compile all the B-roll, A-roll, and things like that. So, so it basically makes it really easy to manage any sort of project that you're working on. It doesn't have to be content creation, it could be your side project or whatever, right? Um, and 
not only that, but like every time you create a new content, because it's driven by a template, you get the same fields. That is, what's the title? When is it due? When do you want to finalize this? If there's a sponsor and then some script checklists like this one over here, how like things that I want to remember what to tell you if I want to remind myself to talk about the giveaway or something like that. And then you can do project specific items you can include and you can customize this to your heart's content, whatever, as complex as you want it to be, as simple as you want it to be. So all in all, it's just amazing to make sure you're organized and everything is in tracked and managed properly. Next up is note taking. As a software engineer or anyone who wants to learn new skills constantly, note taking is critical. There is so much information out there that if you just simply watch tutorials or worse, small bite-sized pieces of information without cataloging them into your own resource set, they can give you a false sense of competence. If you want to find out more about this, you can check out my video titled How YouTube Could Be Ruining Your Software Engineering Career. The link will be in the description below. Either way, note taking is critical when learning. To show you an example of how I do it, let's take a look at a bunch of topics I've compiled around distributed systems to help me refresh and review my own knowledge. Spoiler alert, this may get refined and make it to this channel later this year as a roadmap to learning distributed systems. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you don't miss when it comes out. All right, for the distributed systems, let's go to learning and then let's go to technical interviews. And within that, you'll find system design. And then study notes is where interesting things happen, right? Like this is all the information I've collected over time. And as you can see, it's not just like text. You can have links, you can have formatting, you can put pictures, tables. Um, a lot of things like these are tables that I just made over here by myself, right? Like what are these? So it's a good refresher if you ever have to interview or even at work, you know, sometimes you don't use a lot of technologies and you want to kind of refresh it if you've forgotten or if you've kind of become rusty in this. So this really helps me kind of revise. But um, as you can see, it's like a lot of content that I've compiled and it's really well organized, looks good. It's not like a boring copy paste kind of thing, you know, um, you can put links and you can not just that, but like at any given time, you can just add multiple things. For example, like say, if you want to add a divider page, a call out, say, hey, make sure you check out something, you know, like so that you can set a reminder for yourself. Obviously, there are many more things that you can do about formatting or you can link sections of this in your certain study tasks that you've created. It's it's whatever you can imagine, you can pretty much do in Notion. As you can see, because it's not just tracking habits or it's not just managing your schedule. It helps me take notes in such a detailed manner that I can really compile things as I go. And each day I'm like at work or just through studies alone, I'm learning so many new concepts and I can keep adding to this, keep adding to this and essentially turns into almost like a Bible of things that you've learned over time so that you never lose it. And you've always got some place where you can reference it. And then if you ever need to review something or even if, if you're interviewing someone or if you're interviewing yourself, if you create a task about preparation, if it's say related to Cosmos, then you can just link a section from this note taking that you've done that just pertains to Cosmos, right? Or, or Mongo or whatever. And not only that, Notion also has a web clipper extension for your, any of your browsers. And you can, if you install that, you can easily clip things from the web and then just add to your note taking process, which makes it even more easier. The third important area is collaboration. I use different collaboration tools for work and I don't have a team for YouTube yet, so I haven't been able to use Notion officially as a collaboration tool. But my wife and I are both very busy and there are a lot of things around the households that needs to be done and we both need to be in sync. So that's one example of how we kind of collaborate using Notion. The other place where I kind of collaborate is I have a couple of other friends and colleagues that I usually collaborate on various startup ideas or small projects. And it's really easy to manage those and share information or ideas or just do a brain dump in Notion and collaborate uh, around that. But as an example, let's just look at my to-do list and see how I manage and collaborate around that. So for collaboration, let's go back to my tasks over here. So obviously I have a bunch of tasks in the timeline view that I need to get done. So I'm recording this on the 10th, so on the 11th, I have some stuff at work. Um, and then I have some things that I need to ship and review something I need to review uh, and publish that is actually 
And then there's a video I need to review and publish. And then I need to edit this video tomorrow because I'm just recording it today. So, but say like, if I want to ship this part and I actually don't want to do this, as you can see, it's assigned to me, but I can easily assign it to my wife and then she can take care of it. So this is like a very high level basic form of collaboration. Obviously you can do complicated things. Like if you go to to do over here on the left and then go to the share button, you can see that this is shared. Everyone in the home group can edit the contents of this, right? Like, which means, I mean, it says two people in the group right now, which is me and my wife. But if I had my parents here, or if I had my sister or brothers, or, you know, like a bunch of people living or part of my home group, I could add them and they could all kind of like pick tasks and take tasks and, um, kind of help do the household tasks that are due, right? And as if you can take this example, you probably understand that in a project situation, how easy this is, where if you've got multiple projects, each have deliverables and a lot of tasks, and you have like a work group that has 10 other team members, then you can easily collaborate with them, assign tasks with them, share different things. And there are a lot of like uh, editing collaborations that can happen as well, you know, like where you edit a document that is shared with everyone or assign tasks and manage timeline. I'm showing it as a very personal use case in collaboration, but you can see that it can be pretty powerful. And finally, we have execution. Most tools like Notion end at planning, organization, and note-taking. However, Notion has much more up its sleeves. It can not only help you plan, but has powerful concepts like databases, formulas, templates, and some basic Excel-like functions to help you execute some of that planning. If you've seen my technical interview preparation video series, you know the idea of space repetition is a big part of it. And the entire prep template that helps you practice your coding problems in spaced repetitions was made on Notion. So let's just look at that to see what I mean. Okay, so let's go to learning and then technical interviews and spaced repetition to kind of understand what sort of um, template I've made here. So spaced repetition basically is an idea that you keep uh, repeating certain things at a specific interval, uh, depending on how well you did or how you well you did not do, and that kind of guarantees the uh, how how big the spacing between your repetitions are. So you do the problems you struggle with more frequently, and then the problems you didn't struggle with less frequently. And over time, because you repeated enough, you understand the concepts. But anyways, this this video is not about space repetition. But as you can see. I've made this thing here where every time I work on something, so like, I don't even remember when I worked on this, but find peak elements. So I kind of go in and there's a problem statement over here. And then you read the thing and then you solve it and you kind of grade yourself on it. So in this case, I would grade myself over here, how long it took and what's a score. My scoring template is one through five. Um, and if you did five, that means you got it perfectly. If you did it four, you almost got it. Three means meh. Two means you kind of struggle. One means you had no clue, okay? So then based on that score, it will give you these formulas where it, is, it calculates the date value for when this problem should be repeated again based on your solution score and based on the time it took. So I've built like a weighted formula in Notion. So as long as you give your score, it'll automatically add this problem to your calendar at the right time. So because I did it in five minutes and I scored five out of five in this, it will probably not show up in my calendar for a long time, right? Um, but say something that I messed up here, let's see, so two. So rotate the image, for example, I thought it was hard. I mean, maybe I was having a bad day, so I didn't do well on this. So this is the problem statement. And then I gave it two and it took me 20 minutes. Clearly I got stuck, right? So then what happens is because of that, it gets a certain score for time, certain score for solution and certain score for date. And based on that, maybe in three or four days on my calendar, this problem will show up again so that I can practice that again. Hope that makes sense. Um, and then you can set all of that in Notion. So the power of that comes from when you switch to a calendar view. Um, I need to go back to when I was actually working on these problems, which was a while back, probably oh, June. Okay, so then you get this view of, of your calendar that you can just say if it's June 15 today, then I can just look at the problems I have to do today. I just do those, score them again, and then move on. On June 16, I have a list of things I need to do. I just do those. 
move on. 17, move on. And then eventually, based on the scores, these problems will start showing back up again in the 24th and 25th and 26th. Uh, the problem you did well may not show for a few more weeks. And then the problem you spoil may show up in a couple of days. And that's the whole idea. So I hope you get the idea that uh, um, We've gone from tracking habits as simple list of um, check boxes to kind of having a complex timeline um, of tasks that you need to do and visualize them properly to managing content and linking them together in dif different tasks and projects to sharing them with other teammates, customizing them so that they fit your need in the way you work and make it look pretty and format it, take notes. And not only that, but use complex formulas to make sure you create an entire system that helps you make progress towards whatever goal you have, right? This is just my example, but if you expand your imagination, you can create anything, right? So I hope you get the idea, you know, um, the, the, how flexible this tool is, is just like mind blowing. You can literally transform it to anything you want to be, whether you're into music production or software engineer, or you just like note taking, or you just want to manage your household, or you want to do your finances and make sure your all your investments and portfolios and reminders and everything are here. Uh, you want to track your monthly payments, like it's just unlimited. So yeah, you get the idea and I hope you see why I love Notion so much. All this is only scratching the surface of what Notion can do. A new year isn't just about setting resolutions, but also about figuring out what really matters to you and making sure you use the right tools and processes to make those goals happen. And in my opinion, Notion is an amazing tool that will help you make progress towards your goals. So I highly encourage that you give Notion a try. The link in the description below will get you started. Also, let me know in the comments below which of these four areas I mentioned in this video you struggle with and how you plan on working on improving that in 2022. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful and remember to subscribe to this channel. For direct questions to me or monthly AMAs, follow me on Instagram at engineeringwithutsaf. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.